one day and lead my people to the land of peace. So that was a little piece of Alabama blues by J.B. Lenore. And that's the way how he pronounced his name. I didn't want to play the whole song, I just wanted to highlight the guitar accompaniment, which is a very cool way of playing a shuffle. I've put some background information on J.B. Lenore and the song in the video description. And also in the video description you'll find a link to the tablature if you're interested. It's part of my monster pack, which contains 44 tabs now for, well, a ridiculous amount of money. And it will grow till I reach 50 and then I'll start another pack. So, the song is in 12-8, which means there are four beats every bar, but every beat has an underlying triplet feel. And if I would count out the first measure, it would sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. I'm in standard tuning. And we're playing out E position, although it sounds like G here. JB recorded it twice, the Alabama Blues LP, uh, which he recorded in 1965 when he was with uh, the American Folk and Blues Festival in Europe. There he's capoed on the 4th fret, and there's also a televised version, and there he's capoed on the 3rd fret. And with regard to capo as the 0 fret, so this is an E chord for me, and this is the 1st fret, 2nd fret, and so on. So, I use a thumb pick and a steel finger pick, uh, just for this song. Uh, normally I wear a thumb pick, but not, almost never a steel finger pick. Only when I break a nail, I'll use finger picks. But it gives the cool, that upstroke. If you do that without uh, the finger pick, it's, it sounds a bit less. Anyway, you just need two fingers to play the whole thing. All right, let's start with the introduction. Nice and slow. Only with a B7 chord, your A7 moved up, and moving up your uh, second finger there, and the pinky does some work here, and then a pull off, open to get to the next chord, and that's the long A chord. But I'm not wrapping the chord like that because we need open string so I just finger the second fret of the fourth string and the fifth fret of the first string so that second measure is like that one two three one two three and then partial uh, E7 and going back to the E all right those two measures one more time Last beat, you see there are only two basses instead of three in all the previous beats there. Well, except the last one in the first measure. And then we go to a, an E chord, and all the hammer-ons on the E chords 
throughout the whole song are grace notes. So they're not long but short on the beat. So that first beat and then followed by and that first beat of the sorry that first the second beat of the third measure I strike with a temp the three strings five four and three and do the hammer on and then I go over to the pinching and then there the bass goes to E. And <clears throat> the fourth beat, the first beat of the fourth measure, we have the dameron and the open D string is played with the index. And then you can then you go to a B7, you can use either your use your temp wrap or your second finger. So uh, let's play it one more time and then we go to the verse. The shuffle, he plays it open and then he mutes. So it's not muted on the bridge, no, it's open. So the fleshy part of your hand slightly touches the strings. A slight touch is enough to kill them and <clears throat> that's how he does it. And he has very cool transitions to the next measure. And if you play it like that, it sounds out of whack, but in a, in a triplet, it's really sounding cool there. And he plays with a light touch. Going to the A. And those open E strings there, they are kept short, so... So, and when you're ready to attack the next note, then you kill it. And then we have the signature fill. He uses this fill the whole song. I think also the let's say the explosive content of the lyrics <clears throat> i mean different fills would, would not feel at place here the lyrics are so heavy laden that he just kept it simple and the song benef it's beneficial for the song so here's the 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 fill that he does the whole song through So that's measure seven and eight. And it's all played with a temp, except those open E strings, the, these are played with the index finger. Notice the, the grace note hammer-ons. And also the strum is very light. Now when we go to the A in the second beat, well, I grab it like the cowboy chord, uh, I think JB does a bar with the index finger or maybe the second finger. The difficulty with that is that, of course, you need that open E string. And it's possible that you, if you do it with a bar, that you will hit uh, and kill the sound of that open E string. So that's why I chose to go to the cowboy chords. And in the third beat, the triplet is, and then followed by, all 
right, measure seven one more time. And you know, I, I mute when I go to the single strings, just the last hit before the single strings. And I'm doing a rest stroke in the beginning of the eighth measure. So we had that. And then I rest on the fifth string already, making myself ready to do the hammer on and the, the brush downwards. And the last two beats of the eighth measure, I'm already in, let's say, the shuffle mode back again, where we do the, the muting, which we don't do in the, the signature fill. Another different uh, transition lick, and here he uses I use my pinky on the 5th fret, 4th string and the 3rd string on the 4th fret, 5th string and I move up that 3rd finger and go then and you, you, you have a choice here that last hit either the just the 2nd fret, 4th string that E there or you can hit the open fifth string as well. So you can do it like that or but you'd have to uh, mute it there. So measure nine. And then we're going back for measure eleven and twelve. For the B, we simply bar strings 3 and 4, you can add 5 as well, but it's not mandatory, and we play another great transition. So, and back to our A. turnaround, pinch, and then we have 16 notes, in one beat we're going to play, and all with the temp. So, one more time. Grace notes, grace notes. I wrote out the vocals, uh, well, the, the, let's say the important words on the right spots under the tablature and the singing starts in the fourth measure between beats three and four. So I'll sing it softly so you can hear how the words fit. And, and by the way, you can, you can sing whatever lyrics uh, to this song, of course. Last night. 
And so on. The only difference when I sang the, let's say, the hummed verse is in the signature lick. And that's what he does uh, in the televised version. And there he plays. So it's exactly the same except the, the last five notes. And here he goes to the second fret of the fifth, fourth string. One, two, three, four, five, and... And another very small variation in the B7 section. So instead of going to that partial B7 chord, I do one more, going to the 6th uh, fret there, so, sorry, that 6th, and then the open, as in the tab. That's the end phrase. So pinch and then all with the tap. Sorry. So and then triplet, 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 grace hammer on, grace pull off. A, E7. So that's it for Alabama Blues. Check out J.B. Lenore, he's a fine artist and what a pity he died so young, only 38 or 37 years old and I think he was on the verge of a, a fine career. He could have had a career like for example Johnny Shines and he was the only one, as far as I know, to put some social comments in his songs. And even he did that in the 50s. He had, a, for example, Eisenhower Blues, which was banned. And the record company had to change that to Taxpayers Blues. Alright, check him out and have fun.